All right, can you see my screen now? Yes. What do you see? Kwanzaa. Okay, all right, now we're in business. So hopefully no more interruptions. Okay, so since I have you two here, um, you guys, do you know about Kwanzaa or any other holidays that people celebrate? Um, I've heard about it, but I don't actually know what it is. Okay, now who are you? Shayla. Hi, Shayla. Okay, Hi. and what about you, Miss Alyssa? She's in the bathroom. Oh, you tell her business and we recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, so, I mean, okay, so you don't know about Kwanzaa, but what about any other um, holidays that people might celebrate over the traditional holiday season? Um, I don't know. You don't know? So, like, okay, when it comes to after Thanksgiving, and sometimes even before Thanksgiving, um, I'm thinking some of our, like, Muslim people that might celebrate, they have, like, Ramadan, and they, like, do a bunch of fasting and things like that. And then after then we have Thanksgiving, and then do you know what comes after that? Christmas? Before Christmas. Um, Let's start with an H. I don't know. Okay, so Hanukkah. So our Jewish friends, they celebrate before Christmas. And we have Christ, uh, Christmas, which a lot of the Christian uh, people and people are not Christian. Some do a bunch of shopping and they say oh I'm, yeah I'm celebrating Christmas but they don't really know what it's really all about um, and then we have Kwanzaa and that is our holiday for those of you that watch this that are African American Kwanzaa is an African American holiday that we celebrate after Christmas okay and now it's the new it's the new year and a lot of people are talking a lot about goals and things like that I will send you guys the goals um, live lesson that I did before the holiday because that to me, you know, is the new year and people say, oh, I am have my new year's resolution and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. My thing is you should be doing your resolution all year round. So that's why I didn't wait till the new year to talk about goals. We were not here over the holidays. So I'm talking about Kwanzaa now. We're 10 days removed from the new year, so we just celebrated Kwanzaa. Um, during that how, during that time, you see um, people dress in their African attire. I'm gonna stand up so you guys can kind of see. I dressed up for you guys a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got this piece at the African World Festival. And um, it's been on the grounds of the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. And um, they're there all year round. But the festival, the African World Festival, is in the summertime. Now, I would like to give you guys an invitation to come out to the Charles H. Wright Museum. Um, I'm not there every Sunday, but I do try to go on the second Sunday, so it is free. For anybody that wants to come to the museum, you can go there earlier in the day and you can go around the museum. You don't have to pay. It's free on the second Sunday. And then if you like to exercise, you can come to the hustle class for free from five to seven. And if you guys are going to come, just let me know and I'll try to make sure that I'm there because I try to go second Sunday, but sometimes it doesn't always work. Out, okay, and then I went there this past Kwanzaa, and they did have some celebrations. They had a lot of um, vendors there. They had um, different activities every day, and we'll talk about the different principles of Kwanzaa, okay? All right, so here it says Kwanzaa. This is the cultural heritage of African Americans. Their ancestors or our ancestors came from Africa, the Talibra holiday celebrates the rich heritage of Africa. Okay, and I have a, a video. This video here 
is a little different. I was really kind of enlightened. It's more of a political aspect on how we came up, how the brother came up with Kwanzaa. So we're gonna just uh, take a look at this video and so get it to work. And let's suppose that you're writing a it. really important okay. email to a colleague. Okay. Now you may have heard of Kwanzaa, that celebration that coincides with Christmas and Hanukkah. You may have even been to a Kwanzaa celebration. In the 80s and 90s, Kwanzaa was everywhere. Do you really know what this holiday is about and why it started? Let's jump back a few decades. In 1965, tensions between black communities and law enforcement reached a boiling point when Los Angeles saw the most violent urban riot in 20 years. As the Watts riots unfolded around him, LA-based PhD student and activist, Olana Karenga, saw an opportunity to restore unity in black communities and foster African-American cultural institutions, values, and traditions. So in 1966, Karenga created Kwanzaa, with the purpose to help connect black Americans to their African roots and with each other in the face of marginalization. In fact, the name Kwanzaa even comes from a Swahili phrase, Matunda ya Kwanzaa, meaning first fruits. Karenga decided that this new holiday should fall in the seven day period between Christmas and New Year's. He even added a second A on the end of Kwanzaa to represent each of these seven days. Each day represents a different principle, unity, self-determination, collective responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. During Kwanzaa, Karenga wanted communities to celebrate by gathering together to light candles and to join in a huge communal feast called Kuram, inspired by a Zulu harvest celebration. Every celebration is different, but generally, families come together to light a kinara, read poetry, and dance to traditional African songs. Karenga traveled the country spreading the word about this new holiday. It then gained momentum through schools and colleges. And pretty soon, families started adopting Kwanzaa into their yearly celebrations. At first, many African-American Christians were opposed to Kwanzaa, as they didn't want it to be a replacement for Christmas. But as Kwanzaa became more popular in the late 1960s, black churches began to embrace it, and the holiday became a supplement rather than an alternative to Christmas. Some churches even organized Kwanzaa celebrations. But Kwanzaa really took off in the 1970s as the black middle class started to grow. After the 1964 Civil Rights Act outlawed race-based discrimination in employment, the number of African-American middle-income earners increased dramatically and continued to grow into the 1980s and 90s. As black families started to move into white suburban areas, they began to feel isolated, and Kwanzaa became a way for them to reconnect to their history and culture. By 1995, the holiday was celebrated by an estimated 10 million Americans, compared to just a few hundred when it was founded. With Kwanzaa's cemented popularity, it didn't take long for corporate America to notice. By the mid-1990s, an entire industry had formed around the holiday. Companies like Heineken even created an advertisement around Kwanzaa's seven principles. The slogan read, Unity, Purpose, Creativity, Faith. Heineken Beer is proud to celebrate Kwanzaa and everything it stands for. This is something that Karenga had specifically sought to avoid, saying the challenge for the African people is to avoid the problems of commercialization that they've learned from other holidays like Christmas. In fact, one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa is the importance of a self-sustaining, cooperative economy between African Americans. when the mass marketing appeal was somewhat short-lived. By the mid-2000s, paraphernalia started to disappear from shelves, and many adherents abandoned the holiday as a yearly tradition. Today, only 2% of Americans are believed to celebrate Kwanzaa, despite the fact that African Americans now make up 13% of the population. After five decades, Kwanzaa still stands as an important reminder of the historic challenges that Black America has overcome, and it still remains a uniting force for millions. Kwanzaa emerged out of the fight for equality during the Civil Rights Movement. Of course, social norms in the United States have changed somewhat since the 1960s, but minorities still face greater challenges than their white counterparts. To get a better sense of what discrimination in America looks like, check out this video. If you're black in America, you run into bias at a pretty young age. 
If you walk to school in the morning, you might have to wait longer to cross the street. Drivers stop less frequently for black pedestrians than for white. Thanks for watching Secret Daily. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every day. Now you may have heard of Kwanzaa. That's okay. Let me see if I can get back to the presentation. Let's see here. What do you see on the screen? Um, the video still. The video. Okay, give me one second. So, uh, let's see. I'm like, I let my help leave. I should have made him stay in here for the whole time. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so while I'm trying to figure this out, do you have any response to that video and anything that it talked about? Not really. Not really? Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's see. Hey, okay, what do you see on the screen now? The seven. Thanks. Okay. All right. So right now I'm going to discuss briefly the different principles of Kwanzaa. So we have Emoja. You can say it after me. Emoja. Emoja. Kuji Chakalia. Kuji Chakalia. Ujima. Ujima. Ama. Ama. Nia. Nia. Kumba. Kumba. Imani. Imani. All right, ladies, I hear two voices. <laughs> All right, so uh, Emoja, that's unity, and you can see the symbol here. So my thing about unity is that you need to get together with your family. Y'all seem like y'all have a pretty tight family so far, and I just met y'all within the last 24 hours. But everybody doesn't have this same experience of getting together with your family, um, you know, my thing is, you know, my uncle just passed um, the day before yesterday. He worked at DTE, and he worked, like, so much. He passed in the car, in the truck, in the work truck, on the job, okay? So, you know, I don't want to have relationships with my family where we're only getting together on emergency in a, you know, bad type of situation. Like, we want to get together during happy times, you know, not just only sad times. So, one of my other coworkers that I used to work with, she said, sometimes you have to make your own family. And, you know, as you guys grow up, you may, you know, find out more about that. And, you know, you guys are pretty close, so you may only not only be family, but you're probably friends, too. And my, when I grew up, my mom said that when you get older, you're going to be able to count all your friends on one hand. And I was like, what? And at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah pretty like you know people they grow up they have their own lives but you have to make a conscious effort to you know get together with your families okay all right our next one is Kuji Chakalia that's self-determination that one is pretty self-explanatory but it may not be to everybody um if my thing is like I said it's the new year and we're talking about principles for life here. If it's something that you want to do, you can do it, okay? So all you have to do, you know, maybe when you guys were younger and you used to have little cheers, I remember when to say, all you got to do is put your mind to it and do it, do it. So, you know, whatever you say, set yourself out to do, you say, okay, I'm here at this virtual school and I want to graduate from this school. Or you might say, I want to graduate early if, if that's the case. You put your mind to it you can do it okay you know I'm like for myself uh, when I had graduated from college I said okay I am going to take um, one class 
third semester after I had got my bachelor's degree. And if I would have did that at the time, by the time I was 30, I would have had my master's degree. But me, about money at the time, I did not listen to my young self and I still don't have my master's degree and I'm not even in school right now. So, you guys set yourself out to do something, just go ahead and do it. And, you know, as long as it's within reason, you know, and you can make it happen, okay? All right, GEMA, collective work and responsibility. So you need to, sometimes you need to work together. So you guys seem like you have a pretty good system going where you working together sometimes. And, you know, that sometimes that you can really help each other because iron sharpens iron. And when you, you're doing something, sometimes, you know, you can be a light towards other people. You know, if you're hanging around uh, people that are not doing nothing, you're going to be the next one not doing nothing. You're hanging around people that are doing something. That means that you're being responsible for yourself, and you may rub off on them that they may be able to get some things done, okay? All right, JAMA's Cooperative Economics. This one is really big to me and my family. And... For the African American community, we need to live by this one a lot more because we do not support each other as much as we could. Um, we see the Jewish community, we see like so many different other communities live by this where you go and see them actually supporting each other, but they actually have businesses to support each other with. You know, our problem is. We don't have enough businesses that we can support each other. But even if we don't, you know somebody that can do this, you know somebody that can do that. There's some way that you can um, support them. Okay? So within the Jewish community, they um, have their money going through each other's hands anywhere from 7 to 17 times within their own community. So that means that they're keeping their money in their community. Us as African Americans, we don't do that. Our, we get our money and it's like it burns a hole in our pocket. And our money doesn't stay within the community within six hours. That's ridiculous. So one thing that I learned from my mom, she does have a um, block club and we have the nonprofit 501c3. And one thing that she has really instilled and reiterated into me is that you want to spend money in your own community. So, you know, if you live in Detroit, you know, you don't always want to go across eight miles to do all your shopping. She said, no, I live in Detroit, so I'm going to do my shopping in my own community and keep my money in my community. So what she does is she needs to go to the store. She needs to go to the store down the street. Or there are some stores, you know, Shopping Plaza, 8 Mile and Dequinder, she'll go up there and she'll spend her money within the community. Me, myself, I do shop in my community, but I also shop outside the community. But, you know, I'm working with um, an organization of people that are working to improve the economics of the Af African American community. If you guys want to know more about that, I can tell you about that. So, hopefully, in the years to come, we will start to see some major change in our community, and we will see more of our African Americans and other people supporting us through cooperative economics. NIA, purpose, that one is pretty self explanatory. You may have to. You know, even sometimes for myself, I have to, you know, pray and seek what is my purpose. You don't know, you know, something that you guys want to do, going back to um, the self-determination, you may want to shadow somebody as far as work is concerned and maybe your career and things like that. Okay. All right. Kumba's creativity. Now, um, this one is pretty self-explanatory too, but within the Kwanzaa celebration, as you guys saw in that video, there, um, like I said, I have on my African attire, so that's one way that you can express yourself is through your attire or African garb and um, the dancing and the singing and um, different art forms. 
Okay. Um, and Imania's faith. So like I said, um, a lot of people in the African-American community are Christian, and we have a lot of people that are Muslim too. But, you know, whatever your faith is, just make sure that you are consistent and faithful to it, that you can grow and become a better person. Now, I do want to um, do a little creativity here for you real quick. Um, I did take up African dance when I was younger, and I did learn a song, and it's um, talking about coming of age, and I'm going to try to sing it for you real quick. Hopefully, I don't break your ears. All right. Kum belly, kum belly, belele, belele, belanzimi, belanzimi, zimi, 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 saya, zimi, saya, 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 butu, saya, butu, 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 gunda, butu, gunda, 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 lady, gunda, lady, lady, ta, lady, ta, lady, manga, lady, manga, manganga, manganga, mama, 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 so that is the song that I have for you, ladies. And I learned that a long time ago and I always remembered it. And like I said, it is really about coming of age. So I'm looking forward to working with you all and seeing you grow in this opportunity I have one more video for you guys and we're almost done okay about maybe five ten about ten more minutes and we should be pretty much done. if you pay full price for spa treatments you're crazy save money and look good hey bro where are you going oh hey Lee I'm heading over to the community center to set up for Kwanzaa Kwanzaa what is that Kwanzaa celebrates african-american community family and culture. Interesting. So, is it a celebration that comes from Africa? No, bro. Kwanzaa didn't come from any of the countries from the continent of Africa. A lot of people think it is an African Christmas, but it is not. It was introduced to America in 1966 by Dr. Malana Karenga as a way to welcome the first harvest home here in America. So, when is Kwanzaa celebrated? It is celebrated every year from December 26th through January 1st. Kwanzaa's a pretty cool name. I wonder how they came up with it. The word Kwanzaa is a key Swahili word that means the first, and it represents the first fifth of harvest. So how do you celebrate Kwanzaa? With Kwanzaa, there are seven key principles that are observed during that time. Each day of Kwanzaa, it emphasizes a different principle. Seven principles, huh? That is cool. What are they? There is umoja, meaning unity, Kujicha Guliya, which stands for self-determination. Ujima, which stands for collective work and responsibility, building and maintaining our communities as brothers and sisters. Ujama, for building and maintaining the African-American stores and businesses. Nia, which means purpose. Kuumba, meaning creativity. And Imani, meaning faith in our hearts and people. So at Christmas time, you know, it's Christmas trees and stuff like that. Are there any symbols for Kwanzaa? When decorating for Kwanzaa, the main colors are red, black, and green. Just like there are seven principles, there are seven symbols. There is Kikombe Cha Umoja, meaning the unity cup. A Kanara, meaning the candle holder, which holds seven candles. Mazao, meaning fruits, nuts, and vegetables, reminding those who celebrate of the harvest. Mishuma Saba, meaning the seven candles that represent the seven principles. Mkeka, meaning a mat which is made up of straw or African cloth. There is also the Zabunzi, meaning ear of corn, where one ear of corn is placed on the Mkeka for every child that is at the celebration. There's also Zawadi, meaning gifts that are traditionally given on January 1st. Man, I would have never known all the cool things and fun facts about Kwanzaa for kids. Thanks for letting me know about this African-American holiday. And I hope you had fun learning with F-R-E-S-B-E-R-G Cartoon. Okay, let's see here. 
Any response from that video? No. No. Y'all sure not y'all not twins? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, what do you see on the screen? Code word. The code word is principal. So I want you guys to um, choose one of those principles, and I can go back if I can figure out how to do it. And so I want to hear code word, and then you guys have to list anybody else that watches this video. You have to tell me, or your teacher, principal, and then you have to list one of these principles, Moja, Unity, Kuji Chakalia, which is self-determination, Jima's Collective Work and Responsibility, JAMA, Cooperative Economics, Nia is Purpose, Positivity, Imani is Faith, and I'm going to leave you guys with a quote. I have to find out who wrote this, but it says, see a man as he is, and he will only get worse. Be a man as he could be, and he will only get better. So, principles for life is to get better. And I want to thank you, ladies, for joining me on my second Zoom presentation. Hopefully, did you guys learn anything? Yes. You Can you tell me one thing you learned? There are seven principles of Kwanzaa. Okay. And let me hear from the other one. It's things that you like celebrate. It's, it's something to celebrate? Yeah, like the candles and stuff. Yes. So with that being said, um, during Kwanzaa and Hanukkah, um, each day one of the principals is represented and they celebrate that principle on that day. So, you know, you saw the Kanara that they had the candles on. Some of them were red, some were black and green. And then so when they light it, they go from, they light one on this side and they go, let me see where my camera is. They light one on the, on the right side or the left side and it goes like opposite like that. And then the last day it'll get to the middle. Okay, or vice versa. So. Thank you, ladies, for watching, and I will be following up with you shortly, okay? Okay. All righty. Have a great day. You too.